Many teams while doing good damage are sometimes so complicated to play, and it's tough for the players that are trying to get into the abyss to get those extra primos. And we thought, is there a way to do decent damage while having a smooth experience? And with that, we've gathered the top 5 easiest teams to play in patch 3.1. Hey what's up guys, it's Kevju, and before we get into the video, consider leaving a like down below, and without further ado, let's get on to the first team in our list. Starting off our list, we have the Sucrose Taser team. The team requires Sucrose, Xingqiu, and Fischl as the core, while your fourth slot will be flexible and I'll give you some recommendations later. This is such a beginner friendly team and the go-to for my recommendation when you want to start getting into transformative reactions. Now playing this team is crazy satisfying, you get to see a large explosion of damage the more enemies you have. And you'll have decent single target from Xing Cho's Rain Swords and Fischl's Oz with their A4 passive. Fun fact, I actually used this team to level up my free to play account, and I ended up using this team to fully 36 star the Abyss. I found that the damage for this team is pretty good. Now, there is actually some bad about this team and some weaknesses you might come across. If you're not too comfortable with dodging, you'll have some issues because since Sucrose is a Catalyst user, she has a lower base HP pool and you might feel squishy when you're getting hit. Now, you do have Xing Cho's healing and resistance to interruption, but it may not be enough. And if you want to run a healer or a shielder, you'll probably lose quite a bit of damage because you do want your flex bot to deal some type of off-field damage or application to complement the team. Some really good flex bots other than Beto, I would suggest a Yelan. And you can also switch up the reaction by playing a Hyper Boom comp and you can switch in for Dendro MC. Overall, a great team with an easy playstyle. For all the beginners and newcomers, I think you should pick it up. The next team on our list is the Kokomi Fridge Comp. This team will include Kokomi, Rosaria, Ninja MC, and a Kazuha or Sucrose. This team combines the incredible strength of Freeze with a new Dendro mechanic called Bloom to allow an incredibly fun and easy team to play. Not to mention the damage, those cores can hit up to 30k each and you'll be able to keep spawning them. Now, the main idea for this team is to activate the reaction bloom to drop those cores, freeze your enemies with your cryo unit, and then grouping your enemies and your cores with your anemo unit so they can get hit by the explosion. This team is great because freezing your enemies means you're less likely to get hit and you'll also get healing from Kokomi. Now to really get the damage on those cores is to put as much EM on Kokomi as possible. So she'll be in a full Gilded Dream set with all EM on the stats and a Sacrificial Fragments. You would also run one of your supports with a full Instructor set and you'll see those cores hit for around 25 to 30k. Now the major downside to this team is if you're up against an enemy that cannot freeze such as bosses. If you get hit, you'll get interrupted pretty easily so I'd watch out which chambers you would put them in. Another is the team single target damage is kind of meh as the cores will spawn much slower. I'd like to talk about why Ganyu is so good in this comp. Her burst has multiplicative scaling and has long cryo application so her synergy in this team will be very smooth. If you don't have a Ganyu, don't worry, Diona and Rosaria are great choices here. Also, a Venti in this team works really well here as those cores will still hit and you can focus on generating cores instead of always worrying about grouping your enemies. Taking our third spot is the Kuki Hyper Bloom team. This team is utilizing the Hyper Bloom reaction, scaling with EM, and combining the Electro application of Kuki to deliver a ton of missile like damage. Now, why Kuki is so strong here is because her synergy with Hyper Bloom is so, so good. EM on Kuki is beneficial, and to scale the Hyper Bloom reaction is to stack EM on your Electro unit. It gives a whole new simple playstyle for her, and I'm glad she got the buff she deserved. The team slot will be pretty flexible, it would include Kuki, Xingqiu or Kakomi, Dendro MC, and a flex bot, either an Anemo unit or another Dendro unit. Now to play this team is really simple, activate everyone's skill and burst, finishing off with Kuki to deliver Hyper Bloom damage. What you do want to focus on is making sure you spawn those dendro cores for Kuki, allowing her to make those cores to become missiles. Again, the focus is building EM on Electro, so we'll go with the full Gilded Dream set with EM stats, and you can also look for HP substats. You can also pair it with an Iron Sting, and you don't have to refine it because Kuki's damage herself isn't that much. Some weaknesses in this team is probably single target. It's just not the best, but it is doable. I'd just pick a more suitable comp to deal with it, but overall, strong AoE, the damage is superb, and you're getting another fun and easy playstyle. Onto our fourth spot, we got the Ayaka Freeze team. 
This team has been popular for a very long time, and for good reason. It's incredibly simple to play, you have big burst damage, and of course, Hoyo vs Favorite Child having plot armor. Now the great thing about this team is of course the utilization of freeze so you do need a good off-field hydro applicator. The bad thing is the choices are pretty limited to Mona and Kakomi. The 4 star choice would be Barbara but you do gotta get in there as the radius is quite small. The good thing about these units is you can equip a thrilling tails to buff your attack. But let's get into some of the weaknesses which are kinda annoying. Some weaknesses about this team is if the enemy can't freeze, you'll likely lose a lot of damage from your Ayaka's crits, or you might just miss entirely and the enemy will just escape. The next one is more of a pet peeve, but you do need quite a bit of energy recharge. Not only Ayaka, but if you are running a Mona, you have to run an energy recharge sands and find the ER subs, or else the comp is going to feel quite clunky. You should also have a reliable cryo battery, so either Diona or Rosaria should have a Favonius. Otherwise, great team, big damage, the obstacles aren't too huge to overcome, and it is very beginner friendly. Onto our last and final team is of course the infamous national team. There are so many benefits to this comp. The characters are easily attainable early game from the monthly shop. Single target is monstrous. The AoE is pretty massive. There is so much that this team can do while being surprisingly beginner friendly. Now there are many variations, but the core of this comp includes Shengling, Qingqiu, and Bennett. To be honest, you'd be fine running just these three. Yeah, it's that broken. The flex spot is important and two variations come to mind and I want to quickly talk about the Raiden and Kazuha version of this comp. The biggest drawback of this team is Shengling's burst costing 80. So to bypass it, we can do one of two things. One is to equip an energy recharge sands on Shengling. This way, you'll probably lose a good amount of damage, but it will be functional. The second way is to slap on the Electro Archon herself and use her battery capabilities to fuel Shengling's burst. Raiden has so much benefits to this team. She does a decent chunk of damage herself and benefits a lot by building energy recharge. We're not quite done. She has an ability to buff burst damage, including her own burst. Extraordinary synergy with this team while not having a big learning curve. Man, that's pretty amazing. The Kazuha variation of this comp is quite strong as well. It is more quick swap and you'll have to funnel energy from Bennett's skill to Shungling. But the major strength is Kazuha buffing elemental damage. He has access to the VV Shred and can help solve many energy issues by running a Favonius Sword. Now there are so many variations like the International with Child, the Changyun variant, and there's even a Hu Tao team, but those are quite a bit harder to play and do have quite a bit of a learning curve. Those are the main reasons on why I love this team so much. I recommend it to every single person that wants to get into the Abyss and for people that just want to start out with a really strong team. So that's it for this week's list. If you guys want to see more of our top 5s, click this video right here. And if you guys want to catch our videos as quick as you can, consider subscribing and hitting the notifications below. Thank you guys so much for staying until the end and I'll see you guys very soon.